So welcome to the second suggested lesson for uh, microbit uh, learning. Uh, this time after we've familiarized students with the basics of the microbit is to actually teach them a little bit of uh, computer science 101 which will then enable them to get to grips with all different uh, facets of building both items and programs that work on the microbit uh, and uh, from my perspective as an electronics engineer, uh, enable them uh, in future lessons to uh, build things that interact with the physical world uh, beyond the accelerometer compass and, uh, and the like. Uh, we can see where we're going to end up with, uh, with this uh, particular lesson, uh, which is mostly about variables or data storage. Fundamentally, computer programs are acting on data. Uh, and data is stored in variables. Uh, so having a grasp of where you're storing information is absolutely vital. So you can see uh, that I've built up a little um, sort of sample program and we can run this. And when we press on button A, I would expect it to be storing one, the number one in my variable, and it will then show that number and then we're going to change my variable to 2 plus 6, uh, which uh, in my book is 8. And then we're going to take away 4, which would then show 4. And then after another pause, we will, that should actually be a divide by 2. So we can run that. And we kick that off by pressing A. So it shows 1, then 8, then 4, then 2. So that's all worked out exactly as we need. And this uh, exercise is really just about sort of getting used to sort of manipulating variables and the like. So we'll, um, we'll start a, a new block editor. And uh, we will pull over an on button A pressed. And then we will go into variables. And we are going to set the variable that we're going to choose to a number, which is in maths. So we will pull this over here. Um, variables um, in the block editor can only contain numbers. Um, so I shall put the one in that you saw uh, a second ago. Uh, but if I try and put a letter in, you can see that it's, it goes in a nice pink. And if I try and type my name, it stays pink. And if I click away from it, it just goes back to the last good number that it had. Now you can have as many variables um, as you can uh, reasonably want for. Um, and uh, the default one that comes with the block editor is always um, called item. Um, so I am going to uh, rename that variable. Or you could create a, a new variable. Um, um, let's uh, call it the variable just to uh, mix things up a bit and uh, that means now if we go into variables we've got the variable which uh, it always retains that item as a uh, 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 one that we've uh, always got to hand so now i'm just going to get it to show number and then in the variables block i pull over the variable and drop that in there and then that will then show the number it's a good computer science practice to code a little, test a little. So we'll run that and we'll click on the A button and it shows us the one. We are geniuses. So let's uh, expand that out a little bit further. Um, I'm going to put a pause in for when I want it to show um, a range of numbers. And let's add in, let's get the extra zero in so that is one second or being 1000 milliseconds and then I am going to uh, do my variable bit again where I'm going to say set the variable and we're going to pick up some maths here and obviously you can choose anything that you uh, reasonably uh, want to enjoy um, three plus seven for instance and we can then duplicate this block and we can duplicate this block ready for the next run and that should now show us one for a second and then the sum of three plus seven so we can try that one and then a few seconds later it shows us ten 
Excellent. So let's um, actually get our uh, variables um, being changed, it, having its current value changed. So again, we're going to drag over the set item, which we change to the variable. And then we can go into maths. And uh, actually, any of these blocks are interchangeable because you can just change uh, any of these um, uh, the action that occurs on it. Um, but I am going to take away a number in a second, but I'm going to get it to change itself. So we can put in, let's put in four. I keep forgetting which keyboard I'm operating here. And then again, we will get it to duplicate and duplicate. And we can run that. Comes up with one, comes up with ten, and then it comes up with six. And we can then repeat this uh, where I duplicate this block. Duplicate, duplicate. And this time I'm going to get it to divide by two. Run that one ten six three. Now, um, in the same way that the uh, program uh, block editor can only take uh, uh, can only take numbers, it can in fact only take whole numbers. Uh, so, if we try and divide it, um, the uh, the number. Uh, by something it can't cope with. We know that it's on 6, so if we try and divide by 5, uh, we are just going to get um, the number of times that 5 fits in 6, which is 1. We are not going to get 1.2, so I'll give that a run. 10, 6, and then back to 1 again. Uh, so this is what we call integer maths. It can only deal with whole numbers. Um, other computer languages, um, as I'm sure many people will be aware of, um, if they are doing uh, teaching programming, uh, sort of come in all shapes and sizes of being able to store things. Uh, but within the block editor, the variables are constrained to either being Boolean types, which we'll touch on later on, um, or they are um, uh, just whole numbers. But this gets the essence of doing basic calculations and the idea of uh, these containers, egg boxes, pigeonholes little uh, storage names, uh, whatever you want to call them, very analogous to the X or Y that you see in algebra um, that we can use to manipulate and store information like scores and the like. So in the next segment we will actually do something uh, more meaningful in terms of maths where we will get it to read the temperature and then convert that temperature into Fahrenheit.